I know of a woman who lived in Italy during the Second World War. I am unsure of which region she dwelled in, but I know there were mountains nearby because her family used them as a hiding place for food. The number of family members is unknown to me, but I believe she was not the only female in the household. Maybe her elders were piblings and not her parents. I am weaving this information into my story because these persons sent this young woman up into the mountains to stash and later retrieve their food. I regard it as a fact that she made these trips barefoot. I believe her circumstances to be real because after the war was over, the other thing she wanted to end was her unpleasant lifestyle. Four years later, she met a much older Italian expatriate visiting from the United States and begged him to take her with him and marry her. She promised to make him an excellent companion, a vow she fulfilled, and they had a wonderful life together. I have been thinking a lot about this woman's bravery, resilience, and honorability. As I look out the windows of my studio on Central Avenue in Peekskill, the mere thought of making my way up this road without shoes from where it meets North and South Water Street brings thoughts of bloody stumps to mind. Every time I put on a face covering and a pair of disposable vinyl gloves, I glance down at my feet and remind myself of how lucky I am that the current social distancing rules include footwear. I resented the required history classes in every institution of education I attended. It was not until my late 30s and early 40s that I began to study anything other than the properties of assorted artist materials and how I could mix them together to create my Frankenstein. One of the first history books I read was the late Lansing Lamont's The Day of Trinity. Lamont's understandable and compelling account of the successful explosion of the first atomic bomb remains my favorite work on this climactic event. A memorable paradox is that the people who helped build the most merciless of devices were intensely humane. Theoretical physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer the scientific director of the Manhattan Project, studied Hindu philosophy. Another pioneer in nuclear weapon development was the physicist Marshall Holloway. Holloway, who assembled the nuclear core, was also a bird watcher. In 1943, Nuclear physicists Alvin and Elizabeth Graves began working at Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico. Alvin Graves frugally hoarded his gasoline ration stamps so he could drive from Los Alamos to Santa Fe once a month for a cello lesson. 
In addition, he rationed his drinking water to feed his zinnias. I have been thinking about Al Graves' ability to recognize his priorities, his cello lessons, and zinnias, and use self-control to develop something beautiful and free.